Hello, welcome to Brock or Lane. This is a follow-up to my Terrier review I did um, last week, um, or early in the week, sorry. Um, you remember I bought the Black Lake Crest Terrier from Hornby. I uh, did a little review on it, unboxing video. Um, no, it was all going very, very well uh, until I decided to um, have a go at running it in. And uh, it seemed to develop a fault where it kept sticking in various places. I kind of assumed it was the... Uh, the dirty track work um, but uh, I'm round at my dad's house at the moment and he's got a roundy roundy layout and uh, I, was, I was trying it with the southern version which you see in the picture here um, this is my dad's terrier and I was very impressed when I saw this running and that's why I bought the uh, the BR black one um, and that runs like a dream uh, but as I say this one I bought and reviewed um, started sticking uh, where that one didn't and um, it seemed to be a problem with the pickups I know Sam's trains also said he got a problem with his pickups. Um, they were sort of they weren't formed right. They were sort of bent at an angle, which I didn't notice when I did the review. I mean, don't get me wrong, he wasn't awful, um, but one time after after five times of stopping, it wouldn't restart without uh, a tap. So I decided to take it back to the shop I bought it from, um, and he replaced it with. Um, that one there. Now he didn't have the uh, the late crest one, so I had to have the, the early crest one. But it does give me uh, an opportunity to uh, review these two versions as well. Um, one thing I noticed in the shop when I looked at this one is um, the pickups on this one um, do look different, or certainly look different to the the one I had. They're much shinier and they're shaped better. I don't know. I didn't notice it at the time when I did the review. Um, but comparing the two, I don't know whether it's a known problem they've got, but they look like um, I know there's black, there was black marks on the discoloured on the old one, so I don't know whether it's a batch problem or what it is. But um, either way, these two run like a dream, so uh, I'm very happy with these. But I just show, um, I'll just show you the differences. I mean, this is a southern one with one of my dads. I have actually already put discs on and cab crew, and there's a there's a little tool left on top of the. Uh, the bunker there and I intend to do the same with my version after I've run it in and uh, checked it's all okay so I've got a few bits and bobs there uh, to install some southern discs, a bucket and some backman crew but if we have a look at the differences um, where's my knife I just use it as a pointer you see that on the southern version well for a start on the southern version it's lined on the boiler which uh, was my big complaint about the uh, the BR version and you see that early crest version is also not lined on the boiler which I'm going to have to do myself later on um, but there's, you see this pipe there's the, this pipe on the southern version which is not on the BR versions either of them, there's also these um, and I, I don't know what they are overflow pipes or something like that uh, but they're also not on the BR version some of the BR ones did have them in real life. I've, I've, I've had a look at some photos and they did, but uh, there's a there's a slight variation for you there. There's also some detail around the whistle, uh, which the BR version has got. It's around there, and the southern version has not got. It's a plainer finish there. Now this uh, early crest version, compared with the um, the late crest one which I had before, has got these um, coal rails, which I describe as a bunker extension, um, which is different from the Isle of Wight extended bunker. So I was probably misleading there. I went coal rails, uh, and this version has also got coal rails. Uh, majority of them did, I believe. I think there was only that previous, that late crest one, which didn't, which is quite realistic. So a look at the back end. Um, very nice finish on this southern version. Um, back the back of the cab is left black. I don't know whether that's right or not, to be honest. But uh, I'll let them get away with that. Um, so very similar at the back end there. Can't see too many differences. The numbering on this uh, this late crest one is different to the uh, to, sorry this early crest one is different from the late crest one, in that they're the traditional round letters. Whereas the previous one, the late crest version, had um, letters which were more angular, like the BR diesel style, which I believe is uh, is accurate as well. So they're paid attention to detail. 
um, Hornby. Um, so they need to cr congratulate him for that. Um, I say these are both very nice uh, runners as well. One slightly disappointing uh, aspect of these models is, uh, I well, I don't know whether it's removal or not this coal, but I can't seem to get it out. So I'm going to put some uh, some of this cars coal over the top of it, but I'm going to have to be very careful because it's not going to be a lot of room. So it's just going to be one layer over the top there, um, trying not to block the window so the driver can see where he's going. So I'll have a go at that. I've also put KDs on these uh, engines, which I always do. My dad also uh, uses KDs. So I'll get on with a bit of um, detail adding to that uh, to that black one. So here's a variety of different glues which uh, I tend to use on models. Um, you've got to be very, very careful with glues. I tend not to put glue anywhere near uh, a model as such. Um, I mean, as in going to the model with glue. Because this uh, this will leave strings. You know this is sort of the old purpose. DC, this is a Wilco's one, but they're all the same. Revel and Humble and so on. They, they leave these nasty strings, and if that gets on the model, um, you know, you can have problems with um, affecting the, you know, getting it off when it's dried. It can ruin the paint finish. As is the same, especially with super glue. Uh, the plastic weld will, will ruin <laughs> some of the paint finish as well. PVA is good stuff. Um, well, it takes ages to dry, and it doesn't grip very well. So. What I tend to do is I'll get a bit of scrap card or a bit of scrap paper. Let's say this pink post-it note. Um, and I'll put a blob of the super glue on that, and uh, then I'll I'll dip the loco crew in that. And make sure there's no strings or anything, and uh, then then try and get that in the cab, rather than actually. Putting the super glue on the bottom of the figure, if you know what I mean, um, and that's uh, it, it uh, protects the model. And I'm glad I wasn't near the model when I did that because it did drip onto my mat there. So, uh, it's a good tip to keep the model out of the way when you're doing this sort of thing. So, all you need to do is dip it in like that. And super glue dries if you um, if you add a bit of moisture to the other side, so a little bit of spit or a bit of water on the uh, where you're trying to stick it. And it'll stick really fast and hard to uh, to where you want it. But it can leave a bit of a, a white film around some areas, so you might have to touch that up. That's another good reason for keeping things away from the model. You don't want it. Well, that little guy didn't want to stand where I want, <laughs> where I told him to. Uh, but he's got some super glue on his feet, so I'm going to leave that for a few minutes. And hopefully he will stay where he's put. And I can put the fireman in. Whilst the guy was gluing in the cab, I put a little white uh, plastic uh, lamp iron there. Uh, not lamp iron, lamp, sorry. Uh, just on that corner. It's a little bit uh, too bright, but I think when the thing's weathered it, to weather it down a little bit, it'll look a bit, a bit better than that. And the fireman's now in as well. He was a little bit easier to position than the driver. Now, quite often in steam days, especially on tank engines, they'd have um, a little silver bucket which they'd hang on the uh, the rear um, lamp irons or wherever they could put it on the uh, the rear of a, ve of a uh, tank locomotive. Now these are from Dart Castings, and they're white metal, and I got these in a bag for about ten for a, a couple of quid. Um, and again, I'm going to secure that to the lamp iron uh, with a little bit of um, Super glue, which I've got on there. I've also got a spot of PVA, which I'm using as well. So a little bit of super glue on the handle, and it just pops over that uh, lamp iron, and should uh, glue quite nicely there. And these are fire irons, uh, little plastic ones, a little bit bent uh, out of shape, but uh, that's quite realistic. I think they were from a Daypole model or a DJ model steam engine. I can't remember what exactly, but I did save them. So I'll just be popping a bit of super glue, just running them in the super glue and uh, popping them on top of the tanks, I think, in various places. So the fireman seems to have dumped all his tools on top of the uh, tanks there. Probably not very advisable, probably get into trouble for that, but uh, let's say he's in the middle of uh, doing something, uh, the engine. Um, now it has whitened a little bit with the super glue, but I'll go over the top of that with a bit of black and you'll not notice. I may, I may well pick... Uh, 
these fire irons out in a rust colour later on as well. So let's get to, to putting the discs on the model, uh, the southern discs. Now um, these are from Roxy Mouldings and they're etched brass and I've just painted those white and I'll cut those out and position those. Um, now I'm not an expert on southern discs so I'm going to resort to a, a photograph I found online uh, of this particular terrier. So I'm going to position that uh, just down there as you see on the uh, the bracket. I'll do the same on the rear end as well. Again spot a super glue and that should be fine. So I've glued those discs in position. Um, I've, the way I did it was um, to use the end of a brush, dip it in the super glue, wiped it all over the where are we? All over the prong there, and then um, and I wet the back side of the disc and carefully pressed it against it, and it uh, it took to it pretty much straight away. Now after that, uh, after it's uh, it's set. I've actually put a blob of um, PVA on the back side um, and I know it looks horrible at the moment but it will dry down, it will disappear uh, and it will just add that little extra strength to it and again that was applied with the wrong end of a brush from a blob on a uh, post-it note and for a little extra security I've uh, put a blob of PVA uh, with a knife blade around the bottom of the feet of the crew and that will shrink away and harden and there will be no shift in these uh, details after this hopefully now there's very um, limited space in these terriers for any coal and I've just put a bit of PVA there which is sitting in the middle now I'm going to have to take a paintbrush and make sure that gets into all the edges and then I'll put some of the car's coal on top of that to tease the PVA out into all the corners now this is so tiny, I'd usually do the um, the diluted uh, method, um, diluted PVA and drop it on top, but it's that small, I think. I'll just leave it like that and drop some coal on top, and that should be enough, I think. So there we loaded up with the coal. I'm going to just brush up the excess and put it back in the, uh, the bottle, um, but I'm going to leave that for a good couple of hours. And some of that, I'm going to have to shake some of that off, it won't all stick. But I think it'll be enough to uh, to give you a better effect than the original Hornby, anyway. So back at my flat, I've um, just touched up some of the glue marks uh, which I got on the model around the uh, the top where I put those um, fire irons on. Um, uh, touched up here and there, back of the discs, and some of the little areas, buffer heads and things like that. For that, I use the um, Humbrol satin black. Important that it's satin because that matches in perfectly with uh, Hornby's finish. I've also um, just painted the um, the rims of the wheels. I actually did that with a marker pen. And um, to turn them is a handy little hint. Is uh, a D battery, uh, which you can uh, use just to turn the wheels. It's a handy little tip. Um, if you're buying from swap meet second hand engines you want to test them that usually works not with the bigger engines some of the bigger engines need more power but it's a sound little tip for the smaller models and I'm just using my O gauge um, Daypole uh, Terrier as a guide for the lining which I'm gonna attempt to now I've got some uh, model master um, BR black mixed traffic lining and I'm just gonna do the boiler band now So there it is with the lining on the boiler, I think that looks uh, better than it did. It still needs to dry and it probably needs a coat of varnish over the top just to um, get rid of some of the uh, the glossy uh, look to the lining, that'll blend it in a little bit. And then it'll be the weathering. Um, so that's pretty much uh, it for this video. Um, there might be uh, a bit of a delay with the weathering stage because I've just bought an airbrush. So after 20 years of uh, weathering things exclusively um, by hand with a brush um, and aerosols I finally got round to buying myself an airbrushing kit so um, I need to um, practice with this I'm a bit worried about uh, using it but there again there's plenty of videos on YouTube um, and people showing you how to use them so uh, I'm sure I'll get the hang of it 
Um, and that terrier will probably be the first thing I'll be weathering with this. So uh, I'll see you uh, soon uh, and hopefully with a successfully weathered terrier. I hope you, this uh, video was useful to you. Uh, subscribe below, comment and I'll see you next time on Brockhall Lane. Thank you very much. Bye bye.